This is SOLIDWORKS Tutorial Lesson 3.1. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about using the loft tool. All right, so to create the loft, let's start out with drawing a sketch. So we'll create a new sketch on the top plane. And let's just make it a rectangle centered at the origin. And putting in dimensions, we'll have the horizontal length be 5 inches, and then the vertical length be 3 inches. Okay, so we have a fully defined sketch, and we'll go ahead and accept that and exit the sketch. We're used to extruding or revolving. To extrude, we just pick this sketch and go straight up. But instead, for this loft, we want it to end at a different shape than when we started. So what we need to do is we need to draw another sketch at the end of where we want to build our material to that's different. So we'll start by creating a new plane. To create a new plane, we'll go to the Features tab, go to Reference Geometry, and click on Plane. This shows the Property Manager for the plane over here in the left. And we can give up to three references. And so for the first reference, we're just going to use one. We want to reference that top plane. And it'll give us some options. This one, the default, is an offset distance. We want that offset distance to be 4 inches. So that means this new plane is 4 inches away from the first plane, or our reference plane, which is the top plane. There's a lot of other options that we can pick from, but we're going to pick that offset distance. And we'll go ahead and accept that. So you can see in our design tree that plane 1 is showing up here, and it's parallel and offset from the top plane. So now we're ready to draw a sketch on this plane 1. So we'll go ahead and click on the plane and create a new sketch. You can see when we line ourselves up that the origin of that new plane is right over the origin of the beginning plane. So it just pulls it up to this new plane here. We're going to draw a different dimension the rectangle centered at the origin still. So we're going to have it twist up this way. And we're going to have the dimensions of the horizontal be 2. So we'll put that in. And the dimensions of the vertical be 6. And we'll accept that too. And our sketch is fully defined, so we'll go ahead and exit the sketch. And if we zoom out a little bit, then we can see that that new sketch is on the new plane. We can do the isometric view to kind of see it better can see the distance between those sketches and kind of how the material would go from one sketch to the other. All right, so then we go to the Features tab and we click on the Lofted Boss Base tool. And in our Property Manager here, it's looking for profiles. So we can put any number of profiles in here. We're going to just put in these two. And I'm clicking on these corners because in the loft, wherever you click is called a guide point. You can see those guide points that I clicked on turn green and that is where it lost between. We can click and drag these guide points to different corners and if we do then it twists the material between those points. It still goes between the two sketches but it twists the, the material. So we'll move that back here to the first point and we'll go ahead and accept that loft. So you can see that this starts with a one size of rectangle on the bottom and then ends with the other one on the top and it just builds material in between them. Okay, let's look at another one. We've started a new part and we're going to start a new loft by doing a first sketch on the top plane. So we'll go ahead and make this another rectangle centered at the origin. And we'll go ahead and smart dimension this. We'll have this be the same dimensions as the first time. So 5 for the horizontal and 3 for the vertical. We'll just put those in and accept it. And we'll exit the sketch. OK, a shortcut for making new planes, instead of having to go to that Features tab and the Reference Geometry, is to make this first plane visible by clicking on it. So we've now selected that top plane. If we hold down control and click on the side of the plane and then drag our mouse up, so click and hold the mouse button as well, then it automatically creates a new plane. Then we can offset it. So let's have this be 5 inches from that first plane. We'll zoom out. 
One of these options is the number of planes to create. So if we do two here, then that will create two planes, each spaced five inches from each other. And then we can go ahead and accept that. Okay, so we've got one plane one and plane two. Okay, let's actually delete plane two because we don't want it yet. And it's gone. All right, so we're going to draw a new sketch on this plane one. We'll line ourselves up so that we can see it. And let's do an ellipse. So this is the ellipse tool in the sketch command manager. And when we draw this, it starts in the center. We go out to one of the sides, and that signifies the width. And then we can make it tall or short. And you can see that it puts down these points here at each of the vertices of the ellipse. So if we want to smart dimension this, let's say we want to smart dimension it from this side, the whole width of that ellipse is 4. We can do that, and then the whole height of the ellipse is 2. And we'll do that. It's still blue, which means it's underdefined. So when things are underdefined, we want to know what we need to do to define them. We can click on the edges or these vertices and drag. So we can see that this ellipse can keep that four and two dimensions, but it can rotate. So let's go ahead and drop it back down. And let's click this point over here and the origin and make sure that they're horizontal from each other. So that fully defines that ellipse. And so now we're good to go. And then we'll exit the sketch. All right, so that's sketch two. It's that ellipse on that plane there. Let's go ahead and loft between the, those two points. So a lofted boss base, and we'll select these corners. You can see that on this ellipse, there isn't really a corner in the same spot. So we'll just click kind of in the same spot and it will snap to kind of the closest place that is logical for SOLIDWORKS. We can drag that guide point around anywhere on this ellipse and it will start to twist it around just like we did with the rectangles. And You can see we can get almost all the way around. Let's put it all the way over here. There are some places where it doesn't work at all so it won't show you a preview because it can't build it with that guide point there. So there's a whole length over here that it can't build and then we'll get back to the point where it can start building again. So we'll just put it back in the place where it started, where the lines are kind of straight. It's hard to define it exactly because you have to look at these grid lines and see if they're straight or not. All right, so we'll go ahead and accept that loft. Let's say we also want to, uh, so we want a rectangle in the bottom, we want an ellipse in the middle, and then up here, in the top, we want a circle. We want our shape to end at a circle. So let's go ahead and make one more plane. So we'll do it the old way, the reference geometry. And we'll go ahead and reference it off of plane 1 at a distance of 4 instead of 5. And we'll go ahead and accept that. Okay, we've got plane 3. It's labeled plane 3 instead of plane 2 because we de deleted plane 2. And we'll go ahead and draw a circle on that sketch, or on that plane. So line ourselves up, draw a circle centered at the origin. We actually want this to be a big circle. And we'll dimension it as 7 in diameter. Okay, so that's fully defined as well, and we'll go ahead and exit that and exit the sketch. Okay, let's add a different loft between the two. So we'll click on loft again. We're in the property manager and we can click on the ellipse here and then the circle up there. Okay, and it isn't showing anything, which means that this edge didn't work. You can see that it only selected this portion of the ellipse. So let's take that out. So we'll delete that and we'll actually click on this whole top surface. There we go. So that worked. And it put the guide point here, kind of where the other one was, and it picked a spot on the circle that was close. And all of these guidelines, or these grid lines, are straight, so it shows that they're not twisted around like it would be if we moved those guide points. And then we'll go ahead and accept that loft. 
and you can see that between those three sketches it made a straight loft between them. What if we wanted to kind of curve the material and have it go through all three? We want to do it all in one loft. First let's go ahead and delete this loft that we made because we don't want loft 2, we want to put it all in loft 1. And let's expand loft 1. We can see the two sketches in there and then the sketch 3 down below. So let's left click and edit the first loft. Okay, We can see that when we're editing this loft we don't have plane 3 and we don't have that last sketch. They're not available, they're grayed out in our design tree. That means that we made them after we made the loft. So we need to go back in time and make that plane and the sketch before we put that loft together. What we could do is delete the loft and then make the loft after. So that's one possibility. The other one is to go before and click and drag this plane above the loft. So that plane is now built before the loft was made. Let's do the same thing with this sketch. So we'll click this sketch and drag it up right there. What if we wanted to drag this sketch and make it before plane 3? It gives us a warning sign and says, I can't do that because that would put the child before the parent. That sketch 3 is built on plane 3, and so it can't be built on that if the plane 3 isn't, isn't made yet. So now we can go back into the loft tool and edit the feature, and we have that sketch there for us now. So we can go ahead and click that as the third profile, and it has a guide point as well. And you can see that these grid lines are lofting between all three, kind of making a smooth curve between them. And we'll go ahead and accept that. All right, so that's a loft between multiple sketches. If we open up this loft, you can see all three sketches are in there in the design tree. So there you have it. There's the loft tool.